Now let's start, because behind these smiling eyes there is a void of anger. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Flambe. My name is Yanni. Today we're going to be making what I like to call my hangry pesto carbonara. Guys, if you have a comment, you have something to say, whether it be funny or offensive or kind, send me a comment. Thank you for watching Flambe. Cut. I would say I'm very guilty of getting hangry. In case you're unfamiliar with this term, hangry means angry because you are hungry. Carbonara traditionally has pecorino in it, some people add parmesan, and pesto traditionally has in it parmesan. These two things blend seamlessly. Like, why aren't you already mixing them? If you're looking for like an old school classic, traditional grandma's carbonara, exit the video because you are not gonna find that here. It's gonna make you angry, which is not to be confused with hangry. So I got some chicken breast, I put it in a little Ziploc bag. You can use your pan for this, you don't have to have a fancy little mallet. It's gonna break down the chicken, it's gonna soften it. We're gonna have more tender pieces. It's called tenderizing. It's not completely flat, so it's gonna spread it out. What this is also gonna do is it's gonna even out the chicken. Make sure when you're putting your chicken in your plastic bag that there is no air. You press out all that air, because otherwise that bag is gonna burst, you're gonna have chicken juice leaking out. Go just salt it. It's so important. Before you start any recipe, you need time for salt to penetrate deeply into the chicken or whatever meat you're working with. Let me set these aside. All right, next, look at this gorgeous little wheel of pancetta. None of the Italian markets by me had guanciale available, which is what you would traditionally use in this dish. So I thought pancetta was perfectly fine. Even if you can't even get your hands on pancetta, bacon will be okay for you. Incroyable. Now it is time to work on our pesto. I have this beautiful mortar and pestle here. I'd rather do this by hand than doing it in the food processor. There's just something meditative about... I don't know, it just feels nice to do it. So, first step, I'm gonna add in my pine nuts and just go through and crush these. My goal here is to... Ooh, no, 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 I'm gonna toast my pine nuts. I'm gonna just throw them in the pan just really quick. Just get them a little hot, a little toasty. I just wanna elevate the flavor of the pine nuts. Oh, that smells iconic. Strong boy needs his hungry boy pesto carbonara. Can you guys see the color of these nuts? Are they not absolutely stunning? So I've let these come down to room temp and I'm just gonna go with the mortar. So this has reduced from pine nuts to pine nut butter. Just a wee bit of garlic. There we go, just real quick, roughly chop. I love a rough chop, oh my God. I think in almost every video, I'm like, just a rough chop. You're supposed to use Genovese basil. Genovese basil, <laughs> Genovese basil. <laughs> wow. Ideally, I'm picking off the little leaves since traditionally that's what you're supposed to use, although, I kind of left tradition in the dust when I toasted those pine nuts. I'm just gonna roll a couple leaves together, make one big mass, and then just go through, chop a little bit. I just wanna make them into smaller pieces so I can blend them more easily in this pesto. These are still large pieces. Oh my God, if smells could kill, I would be dead on this floor right now. When you add salt, this process speeds up exponentially. Oh my gosh, this is 10 times easier. I don't have a microplane yet, so I'm gonna be using this. I think that should be good. Our olive oil. It's incredible how such a large volume of basil leaves can reduce into such a little tiny paste. Oh my God, my arm, <laughs> this is killing me. Jesus. How do Italian nonas do it? Italian grandmothers could probably beat me up really easily. Give me a little taste. Mmm. Mmm. Carbonara take five part two. We are here, it's time to do our eggs. Oh yes, I've never done this with my hands. It feels so satisfying. So what I'm doing is separating 
three egg yolks. Those are gonna go into a little mixing bowl over here. I like to have a larger egg yolk to egg white ratio just because it makes it more rich. And this is, this is our hangry pesto carbonara. This is not our, mm, it's a light kind of meal pesto carbonara. It's like, I need to feed myself now. Okay, beautiful. Now we mix this little egg mixture. I'm not using chopsticks this time, like I did in my omelet video, because we're not really making an omelet in this video. I don't have pecorino for this recipe. I don't think that's a big deal. Let me know in the comments below every single opposing opinion you have. What I'm doing is grating a little bit of Parmesan right now. I just had the most brilliant plan. I don't wanna sit grating this for the next 15 minutes. I don't got time for that. Listen, I wanted to do the pesto analog. I wanted to do that by hand, but grating cheese, it's not gonna make me feel good about this dish. So what I'm gonna do is chop one third of Parmesan, two thirds of this Grana Padano cheese. You can see like the little crystals on it. It's been aged a bit. So I think it's okay to use this instead of the Pecorino. It's not gonna have that same umami quality, but it will be funky, which is what I want. So one third Parmesan, two thirds of the Grana Padano, the aged. Let's make some blender cheese. It took me so much less time. Oh God, that made me feel so good. Don't call me an icon, I didn't invent this. If you have a Nutri Ninja, a Vitamix would absolutely do the job. Just make sure you're not gonna break your stuff doing this. So we're just emulsifying the cheese with the egg here. All right, now we're gonna add a little bit of pepper, a good amount of pepper. Adding pepper, adding red pepper flakes to a very rich and creamy dairy-based sauce is gonna be a good way to give your taste buds a break from that very intense richness. Otherwise, how do you know like if it's good or not? You have to have bad days to know that there are good ones. Except these are just two different good things. All right, our prep work has been completed. Okie dokie artichoke, let's move to the stove. So I left the residual oil in here, it infused with the pine nuts and I was like, I don't wanna lose that flavor. So as soon as this warms up, we're gonna throw in the pancetta and we're gonna let it sear for a little bit. Cook, let's render some fat. Name of the game here is low and slow. You wanna render out as much pork fat as possible. It's a good idea to taste your pasta water, then you can see just how much salt is gonna be absorbed into this pasta. It tastes like you're at the beach and you get a big mouthful of salt water. Not quite that salty, but just under actually. Um, so I'm happy with this. I'm gonna let it come to a boil. Let's taste one of these cubes. Ha. Ha. So good, so salty. Beautifully tender, just brown enough. We have some pork fat swimming at the bottom of this pan. Now, chicken. This is the chicken that we started very long ago. We salted, we let it sit. Hopefully it'll absorb now some of that pine nut olive oil, the rendered fat from the bacon. Let's use every part of this dish. So I looked literally everywhere for bucatini. I went to two different Italian butchers, one in my neighborhood and one like far out that I had to drive to. Nobody had bucatini, nobody had guanciale. So that's why I'm using pancetta. And then I'm opting for this linguine with spinach now because I think it really blends well with the pesto color. I mean, those greens are so, so beautiful together. And I think with carbonara, it's nice to use a long noodle pasta to really lap up those juices, you know? How much is al dente for this? Okay, amazing. I'm just gonna have to figure it out. That's fine. All right, whatever. I'm good with this. I'm gonna lower this, plop this in. Our chicken looks pretty good. I'm gonna remove it from the pan, put it on the cutting board so I can cut it into little pieces to add to our dish. So as the water's evaporating along the edge of the pot, you can see the salt deposits over here. So it's evaporating, it's rising up, and then this is drying on the sides of the pot. That just shows you, this is really like salt water like the ocean. Okay, while that pasta is on a stove, I'm just gonna go through, cut this into little cubes. That's it. I mean, just rough, rough pieces, almost shredded. I just want twice the amount of chicken as I have pancetta. So I'm gonna tuck this aside. Always, you know, check back in on your pasta. Make sure you mix it a bit. You don't want anything just sitting at the bottom and cooking. 
more quickly than the stuff at the top. Two more minutes, then like, out you come. So I'm gonna take this carbonara egg mixture, pour it right over here. Turn off the heat. Let me taste the noodle. All right, get this off the stove, let's go. Slowly add your pasta in. The danger with making carbonara is that you do not want your eggs to turn to scrambled eggs. You want them to stay creamy and thick and rich. So the trick here is to constantly, constantly stir. I'm just gonna take a little bit of pasta water. Pasta water is the key to making any sauce absolutely delicious. It's like the final step that really takes your pasta game to the next level. Okay, now I'm gonna add red pepper flakes, just a little bit more black pepper. Again, sometimes you just need spice to cut through all that, all that richness. One, two huge tablespoons of this pesto. Let's mix it, let's taste it, and see if it needs more. We've got a little bit of blender parm over here. All right, let's give this a little taste. That carbonara is so beautifully rich and creamy. And then soaring above everything is the aged grana padano. It adds a funky kind of flavor to this. You have so many notes and, and different things blending together so beautifully. Gentle, sneaky kind of quality of the, uh, of the toasted pine nuts. It, I know sneaky is like a weird way to describe it, but it just like, it kind of, it just sneaks up on you. And then bam, pancetta, like salty attacks you. And then you have like, mm, you have your chicken. You have your chicken that fills you up all the way. There's so many peaks and valleys here. It is an emotional, flavor-packed roller coaster. I would love it if you guys could drop a couple likes. I always say a couple likes, as if you have the ability to like things multiple times. I mean, what am I saying? <laughs> as always, thank you for watching. My name is Yanni, and this is Flambe. I love you guys. I love you. You did it! You filmed 10 videos. You filmed. You filmed. You got through 10 videos. <laughs> I am so ready for a vacation. <laughs>